two, two parts. One is when I'm feeling the acute loneliness and you suggested this imagination, um, maybe I'm curious as to other, uh, other actions to, towards self-love in, in, in the loneliness moments. And also, is seeking other to sort of fill that loneliness a distraction from using that loneliness to find self-love? It doesn't have to be. If you're aware of yourself in the meantime, because other people are just another symbol to trigger the frequency that you wish to experience. So it can actually help in that sense to change your frequency. But in the long run, if you're not learning from that, if you're not seeing that it's triggered within yourself, if you're not using them just as a symbol to trigger how to become more aware, how to realize more of the frequency that you experience when they show up, to see that it's happening within yourself, within your own consciousness immediately, and that they're just a symbol for you to say, ah, now I can allow myself to not feel lonely or to feel some other state of being. But you're giving yourself permission. So anything, even, you know, changing your environment to train that frequency can at times be helpful. I would minimize that uh, because usually it becomes another drug chase. However, when it does happen, when it does show up and you do feel relief, oh, thank God that you're home or thank God that, you know, uh, or you're just calling up a body or whatever. If you're changing your environment to feel better, then do learn from it. Like, be really aware of what's happening there. So that in the future, you can trigger that frequency without needing to manipulate the environment or your field of perception. You're just instantly shifting or just instantly seeing the love that's there. Does that make sense? Yep. Um, the more you surrender to that aloneness, which happens the more tired you get of feeling lonely, feeling the story of loneliness, the more tired you are of pretending to be lonely, because you're never really lonely, but to pretend to be lonely, every story of loneliness is a pretend, pretending to be lonely. So the more you grow tired of that state of being, the more you really don't want that anymore, the more you'll surrender to your into your aloneness, and the more palpable it becomes. It's sort of it's like a blanket that you start to be sucked into. The blanket of aloneness, the vividness of isness. Aloneness is simply being. When you notice your aloneness, what you're noticing is your raw, naked being, without attributes, without entertainment. The more you surrender to that, by for a moment being tired of the entertainment, because based on the entertainment, you feel a lack when the entertainment is not there. Does it make sense? Entertainment here being anything. Anything that entertains you can be hanging out with friends, can be going to a movie, whatever entertains you. Without that, you may feel a lack at times. So then it's helpful to be aware of whether that's an actual lack or whether that's simply because you've attached the frequency of love and passion and freedom with the particular form of entertainment that you feel now is lacking, thus I am lonely. It is still just pretending to be lonely, and then when they're there, pretending not to be lonely. Transcending both loneliness and unloneliness is simply being, or aloneness. What you notice in your aloneness is the being that never leaves you. When you start to appreciate that, for the fact that it never leaves you, that it's always there, that it's vividly awake, present, comforting you, consoling you, the more aware you become of those hidden qualities, which are already there, they're simply hidden. The more you activate these by noticing that they're already there, that's how you realize something, simply notice what's already there. The more you uncover the now, the isness, just uncover it, by genuine interest in the depths of that aloneness, that being. You only have that genuine interest in the depth of it when you're sick and tired of pretending to be dependent upon circumstances or upon the idea of loneliness or non-loneliness. When you're really tired of that, you'll naturally, your interest will naturally go to, okay, so what remains? If the entertainment isn't working out for me, whether it's there or it's not there, 
Now, what's the next step? How can I entertain myself on a deeper level? And then suddenly you start to become aware, you start to surrender to the aloneness that's simply here. And you drop your world view for a moment, your consciousness of other people, your ideas of other people, and all that remains. And what sort of is like it's expanding, it's like it's oh, becoming more palpable, more in your face, more here suddenly. It was already here, but you're making more obvious that which was already so obvious by simply surrendering to it. And again, like I said in the beginning, it's like marinating a chicken. The more you surrender into it, the more you uncover these hidden qualities of love and never being alone, always being connected, those kind of states that we long for, the ecstasies that we desire. The more we give ourselves to that which contains all of these hidden qualities, the more those will no longer be hidden. Does that make sense? It does. Is it too abstract? No. You ask for another way to evoke the love in the state of loneliness? Is that answered or are you still left with a, so now what? No, it, it answers the question. I'm just wondering if it's going to work or not. <laughs> Do you want it to work? Yep. Give yourself, capital S, some credit when you're in those moments. Like give it credit, give it credit, give it validity. When we're not giving it validity, we feel lonely. But the more credit we give our aloneness, our own presence, our own isness, our own existence, our sense, do you know what I'm talking about when I say existence, our sense of existence, our sense of being, you have the sense of being? You can recognize that? Yes. Just right now you're being here, right? You can notice that. It's always there. When you're alone, it's there. It's right here. It's always 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 here. Give more credit to that. Surrender more into that. Give yourself more to that. As if you're falling in love with yourself. Not the idea of yourself, but in a sense, falling in love with the absence of the idea of yourself. What remains there? The primordial idea of yourself, which is the ism. It's God's idea or source's idea of you is that existence. And it is. And it is. And it is. All things are it. Because they are. Therefore, they are being. You are being. All are being. Does that make sense? Can you have a palpable physical sense of it? Even if just subtle, like a subtle sense of, ah, oh, being here, presence, palpability, vividness, hereness. Is there a sense of that? A recognition of that? Definitely. Right. Fuck. Other people. Fuck being lonely. Fuck not being lonely. Fuck good company. Forget it. Pretend nobody was ever there to console you in the first place. What would remain if he'd not even have the notion that there's other people to go to to console you? What if you'd forever be with other, without other people? What if he'd be on a planet without other people? He'd be the last man alive. Or let's say you'd be the first man alive. So he had no notion of, oh, disasters, everybody died except for me. You're the first man alive. No notion of other beings. You've never come upon a prop. You've never come upon another human being. Ever. He don't know what that is. He don't know yourself in relationship to another physical body. You've never seen it before. You are all there ever is. You don't know any better. You only know the presence that is. And you give yourself to that fully. Without hope for other people. Because you don't know. There's no other people. You have no notion of it. Now that imagination may or may not work for you. But it's one possibility. Of many scenarios you can draw for yourself to set the stage for you to let go of the hope of other people consoling you which leaves you with the only option left 
which is to surrender or to fall in love with yourself. As long as there's hope, there's interest in that hope. As long as there's interest in that hope, you're not going to fully uncover yourself. Because you still associate more happiness with something out there. It's an association problem. It's a problem of misassociating yourself with others. That's what loneliness, the story of loneliness, comes from. From misidentifying yourself with others. Others are not yourself. Yourself is. That's where your joy is, but we've covered that up through our associations. Every association we have to somebody fulfilling us in some way is in a sense covering up the fact that we already have that quality innate within us. They just bring it out in us. That's why we're all here together, so that we can explore different themes and experience all kinds of frequencies and trigger that and also become aware of how we're covering it up so that in a more empowered way we own our own frequencies again as being an innate part of our own consciousness an innate ability to experience them of our own consciousness 